Hey, it's Craig here with MaritimeGardening.com and I got some soil a bit workable in one of my gardens and uh, as you can see I've created a sort of microclimate uh, over this bed. So uh, I just did a vi uh, podcast talking about these sort of techniques and these sort of really basic cheap implements that you can use, plastic squares and just various ways to use uh, this 6 mil poly, uh, the kind of uh, plastic I'm using here. They'll last multiple years and uh, fairly easy to store and you can use these to create little microclimates over your garden beds to get uh, especially tough things today I'm planting spinach and lettuce to get growing so what I'm showing you here with my hands is how far below uh, what the soil level is relative to the very top of this box that frames the garden in that's one good reason to use boxes for gardens even though it's sort of a waste of wood in a certain sense um, so the soil I would say the soil is about five inches above grade and the top of the box is three inches above the soil so all that means is that if you can put something over the top of the box, you've got like a little tiny cold frame that's, you know, by putting that plastic square over this box, I've got a cold frame that's three inches high. <laughs> but for, if you're planting something that, I mean, I'm going to plant spinach, lettuce, and, uh, spinach and lettuce here, and, and I'm trying to get it germinated and I'm trying to get it started, even though it's a bit cold for that, um, you know, those things need about, uh, I think, uh, five degrees Celsius uh, temperature, the minimum temperature to germinate, but of course 10 degrees and, and 15 is more, uh, more advantageous. Um, so by putting this plastic over the top here, and I've had it over for a bit to thaw the soil out, right? Um, by doing that, uh, I can create that little microclimate to get uh, germination. And then in a few weeks, uh, it should be, I mean, those are really tough plants. Uh, so I'm not worried. Basically, uh, I'll, I'll, the, so the plants will start growing, and uh, and I'll be able to take those plastic squares off, and they should be able to fend for themselves, um, unless there's some, you know, insane turnaround in the weather. Um, they can take, you know, zero degree nights or even colder than that. So if I've gotten it right, by the time the plants are too tall for the, that three inch space that's there, uh, they won't need the, the protection anymore. I mean, really, this, this plastic's here to get these plants germinated and get them started. Um, so what am I doing right now with this? So these are old uh, uh, leaf bags that I had in my garden. I had them over some of my beds. If you watch that compost tent video I did last fall, a uh, trick I used to keep the soil from... Um, uh, freezing up too badly in the winter. It works to some extent. Um, and I, I'll do a video on that very soon. I just did a video where I walked through the whole garden and showed what was frozen and what wasn't and, and, and reviewed the various uh, techniques I used in my garden to minimize uh, freezing up of the soil and the relative success I had with those different techniques. Probably find that interesting. Um, anyway, so these are the bags off one of those compost tent gardens and see they're still you know they're still strong enough to, to use. They're still, they didn't compost. I mean nothing's going to compost if it's minus 15 <laughs> just doesn't work that way uh, so they can still be used and I found these cardboard it either has to to work with it it has to either be completely dry or completely wet if it's wet like this you can you can fold it really easily and, and it's almost like working with paper mache and it'll sort of keep whatever form you put it in and why am I throwing soil on top of it that's just to keep it from blowing away uh, for the most part, it's, I see. I just throw a little bit of soil on it. It keeps it, the wind from lifting it up. It's, it was too windy to record. That's why I'm doing a voiceover video here. Um, I don't like doing these voiceover videos because they take about three or four times as long to make. Um, but um, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> after I just wouldn't be able to make a video. Um, so by putting all this paper down here, what, what I'm doing is I'm. De Some people will say, "Well, that seems like a lot of work." It's like, no, it isn't because uh, this. Uh, paper is going to keep uh, every part of the garden where the paper is laid down is going to be less likely to uh, dry out right? and keeping the sun off the soil so this this will maintain the moisture level in the soil um, the worms will eat it so it'll become worm food which means it'll become worm fertilizer which means it'll feed my plants so it's fertilizer um, and everywhere that I'm putting this paper um, Underneath the plastic, the, whatever we, and I'm sure there's weed seeds there, the weed seeds that are underneath that paper will germinate, try to get through the paper, won't be able to break through the weed, break through the weave of the paper, and those weeds will just die. So, you know, by the time I'm done laying out all this paper, I will have made, let's say, 90% of the area in this garden weed free. I don't have to do any weeding at all, right? I've kept the organisms in the soil happy, so they'll do their work and they'll they'll basically do my tilling and my fertilizing for me. 
I've kept the sun off the soil so the soil won't dry out at anywhere near the same rate, so I've minimized the amount of watering I had to do. So by spending, I think this probably took me, I think I was out there on this garden, uh, sowing these seeds might have taken half an hour in total, and it would have taken a lot less time if I wasn't filming it. Um, maybe, let's say 20 minutes or 15 minutes it would have taken me to do this if I was just, you know, just a guy in his garden not making a YouTube video. Um, so I don't mind spending 15 minutes to uh, to, to sow, uh, I think this is a 4 by 6 bed, it's not huge, um, to make it weed free, you know, sort of uh, self-maintaining, to make a self-maintaining environment. Now, I mean, this... Uh, paper isn't the only thing I'm going to put on here. For right now it is just because all my other sources of mulch are frozen in piles and I can't get at them. I've got different things laying around. i got seaweed, i got some old leaves, some old grass, but everything is kind of frozen up right now. I can't really uh, get that stuff, get at it. Um, uh, also it's not necessary because I'm going to have the plastic squares over this so I don't have to w worry about it blowing away. But when I take the plastic off of this um, to keep this paper from blowing away I have to put something on it like uh, wet grass clippings or I, I like seaweed because it's heavy and it holds things down really well and it's dark so it attracts heat um, I, but I mean you can use anything you can even put sand on it, you can put rocks on it whatever but um, you know it's good to put something that's going to feed the soil there as well right so there's different I'll do some other videos on, on using this technique as well you know ideally I would have put seaweed underneath the paper because that feeds the soil as well I like to put some sort of compostable underneath the paper then put the paper down and put other things on top of it, even sticks or whatever, just to hold it down. But there, that didn't take long, and now the garden is all ready for um, sowing of the seeds. Um, today I've got uh, spinach and lettuce. I find those are just about the toughest things you can grow. I mean, there's lots of other things that are tough, but uh, peas would... This just, just isn't the right space for planting peas. I'll be planting peas very soon. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe today. I'm, I'm, yesterday when I filmed this, today is uh, Sunday, March 24th, as I record. Um, so I got um, two different varieties of spinach, uh, two different varieties of lettuce, and uh, I think Avon spinach. And I've got some uh, soil. I, I've always got a bit of, you know, good composted type soil kicking around um, for for process like this. So I guess in a sense, this video. I'm showing this weed-free technique with the paper. I'm, I'm showing the uh, jump start, kick start, you know, sowing ahead of schedule technique. Um, I'm just showing you the variety. What was this one called? Paris Island Cost. I find this a really tough uh, kind of freeze-free, frost-free, you know, sort of a great early season thing to grow. Um, uh, but I'm also showing you uh, direct seeding because uh, lots of people ask me about direct seeding. Oh, I find it really hard and I haven't had success. And uh, I, I really think, uh, you know, if you haven't had success direct seeding, there's probably just one little thing you're doing wrong. It's it's very easy to do. Just, just like like a lot of things, like like making homemade bread is just about impossible if you don't know every little thing. But it's very it's very easy once you know how to do it. And this is the same sort of thing. Once you know how to do it, it's unbelievably easy. But there could be like one little thing you're not doing. So I find um, the best approach to uh, direct seeding, and this is regardless of the time of year, is to... Uh, the spaces between the paper there are about one to two inches wide. That's all you really need. I mean, I, I've done other videos where I've made them even wider, but it's just... It just makes more weeds. I mean, the only place weeds can be now is in those little spaces, so why not make them as narrow as possible? And also keeps uh, that much more of the soil moist, right? But you just throw your seeds. So I haven't, notice I haven't made a furrow here. For some things you want to plant, you know, the bigger the seed is, the, the deeper you want it to be. But I find bigger seeds, you sort of push them down with your thumb. Uh, and basically, if you can push the seed into the soil with your thumb, you should push it into the soil. Uh, for something like lettuce, where it's basically a teeny tiny like a grass seed, you can't, really can't push it in. And uh, generally speaking, I find you don't need to push those things in. So I'm putting my lettuce seed, I'm laying it down fairly thick here maybe. You know, I'm just, just making a little trail of it. Now, most important for things like lettuce is you need to, so I'm, you know, I'm off camera here a little bit, but uh, you'll see me do the rest of the garden. I'm, I'm pushing it down onto the soil. I'm making good contact. I'm, I'm pushing it down a little bit. Right, so instead of making a furrow, by pushing down on the seed where it is in the soil, it's almost making its own furrow, but it's got good contact. Now what I'm doing is taking some nice, rich compost. I mean, you just use whatever you've got. But uh, And if I didn't have a bucket of compost laying around, I would have 
pulled a bit of soil out of this actual garden and just stuck it in the bucket and <laughs> smoothed the back of it again. But you take some good, you know, the best soil you can get, uh, just because why not, right? Um, and you put that on top. I might be putting it um, less than a centimeter uh, deep, right? It's less, less than a centimeter uh, layer of a layer of soil here, less than a centimeter. So that would be like uh, less than half an inch. And I'm patting it down so it's even less than that. So um, it would be less than a centimeter or like a, maybe a quarter inch, give or take, uh, of depth after it's been patted down, right? So, so. The seeds aren't on top of the soil, right? Because I put this down. I found this is the, the, and I've used different techniques, but I like this technique. I get really good results with it. I find it um, easy to do. You know, a, a lot of things as as a planter. So right now I'm planting the um, spinach, and I'm the spinach seeds fairly large, right? So I'm, you're actually able to push it in with your thumb a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sort of just pushing it in with my thumb, um, just until the seed is at grade. So I'm just pushing it into the soil. I'm not pushing it down into the soil. I'm pushing it in. Uh, almost like I'm plugging it in. So I'm not pushing it way down deep into the soil. Just just till I feel the soil on my finger, if you can if you understand that. Um, I can still see the seeds here, but they've been pushed into the soil a little bit. But I can still I haven't made a hole, I haven't put them in deep. I can still see them. Um, but they're not laying on top of the soil. I've sort of impregnated them or plugged them in, I guess. This, uh, I should have brought it, the camera in for a tighter, a tighter angle here. Um, if there's enough questions about what on earth I'm talking about here, I'll do another video where I show that approach. But anyway, that's what's going on here. Um, I'm putting the seed down, patting it down, putting a layer of soil on that, patting that, a very thin layer of soil. I mean, basically, the, the bigger the seed is, the more soil you put over the seed. That's, that's the general... Uh, rule of thumb and you know, people tend to get uh, very technical with these sorts of things. You can think about how actual plants sow their own seeds in nature, right? The seeds usually get knocked off of the flower in the fall and then uh, rain pushes it pushes it down to the soil. You know, there's usually there's a bunch of stuff on the on the ground and the seeds sort of, some of the seeds get through all that stuff and actually get in contact with the soil and then over the course of the winter snow and rain and ice push the seeds down Right, they're really not going to push the seeds below grade. Or they're going to push the seeds in to the soil, but not down. You know, there's no seed that's going to end up like three inches below the ground after a season. Right? Now you're just planting. Almost all your vegetables are annuals, so everything you know needs to be in in contact with the soil and maybe in the soil a little bit, but not super deep. I'm, I'm making this. I'm belaboring this point, but uh, the, the point is that. Uh, if your seeds aren't germinating, it's 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 probably something really simple that you've 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 gotten wrong uh, with the germination process. It's either too deep, um, often it's too deep, <laughs> too deep, uh, too wet or too dry, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so by setting up a garden here where it, it sort of maintains its own moisture level, uh, I'm not going to worry about it being warm enough because I know I'm creating a microclimate where that happen. And uh, you know, there's a little bit of soil over the seed so I know that uh, they're not going to get dry, they're going to get just a right amount of moisture and so on and so forth and uh, I think it'll work out just fine. I actually think in this video that I, uh, I, f I forget to water the uh, <laughs> I forget to water the garden before I put the plastic on. Uh, right after I finished filming this, I actually had to take the plastic off and, and water it. Uh, the soils, everything's a bit moist, but it does need a good sort of dousing uh, to, to, you know, just to get everything, to get all the magic happening. The season you'd be wet, and then you'd warm up, and then they'll start to germinate in a few, you know, probably, probably five days, uh, give or take. We should get some germination happening here. So we got our seeds in there. You know, I, I've sped the camera up. I, I can't move this fast. I've sped it up just so the video doesn't take forever. But I can actually take you through the entire start to finish process. I like to do a lot of start to finish type scenes, so you can see uh, there's no magic. You can see what I did exactly how I did it from start to finish. So I put that one over there. It doesn't fit perfectly. That's fine. And uh, put that one over because it wasn't long enough to cover the whole bed. I got that's the great thing about having these little you know plastic between two pieces of wood. There, they're sort of great. You can you can half roll them up and they're easy to store. You can half you can make them fit whatever space they need to fit. Anyway, uh, hopefully we can get some sun over the next few days and uh, we can get some germination going in here. Now these beds they're still frozen. Uh, if you go down about four or five inches below the below grade, uh, you know 
you go about four or five inches down, there's actually ice in the ground. Uh, but that'll just continue to thaw with this little microclimate I've affected here. And I don't, uh, my experience has been uh, using this te technique before. Uh, it won't impede the germination in the soil that uh, has already thawed with these varieties of plants. Of course, you can't grow tomatoes here this time of year, <laughs> that sort of thing, right? But uh, spinach and lettuce are tough and they don't mind a bit of cold, so they'll be fine. I mean, there's lots of other varieties of, of things that are, you know, certain kinds of greens that can take that sort of cold too, and you can, you can make that sort of thing work. So I hope that gave you uh, some good ideas and uh, you enjoyed watching that. And if, if you did, please like, share, subscribe, check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Don't forget to click the bell if you want to be notified when I make new videos. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.